Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Again, back with us is our favorite correspondent on the inside of CPAC, the beloved and well-known Will Johnson. Welcome back, Will, and thank you again for staying up into the wee hours of the morning to bring us the inside scoop from Florida. Uh, uh, no problem. I love to engage in this fight. <laughs> So let's talk about what we don't know. As we discussed, those of us at home that didn't get the privilege of going to CPAC this year, we're watching on TV the speakers. Today was Ted Cruz, Marsha Blackburn, Tom Cotton, Ted Cruz. I watched them all. But as you've mentioned, the speakers on the main stage are not just the whole program. In fact, as you put it, there's a lot more going on. Oh, yeah. Give us yeah, an insider scoop. You're there. You're there all day. I mean, now it's in the morning. You've been up all night. What are we missing by just watching on TV? Well, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. One thing that I did miss, and I'm like kicking myself, Jim Acosta from CNN was here walking what? through the hallways. And I'm, <laughs> yes, exactly. And I'm like, Oh, no, I missed it. I missed it. Everyone had to come tell me about it. He was there. And of course, he's trying to act like he's being civil and he's all great. And they were telling me, but they were, you know, they started chanting CNN sucks, CNN sucks. And they pr pretty much ran him off. And I'm like, oh, I missed it. Where was I at? So, but other than that, the speakers on the stage, personally, it's like a, every, a lot of people want to hear the speakers and you heard them because you could see them various parts of the country, people are watching it and they're seeing the speech, but they're not seeing people behind the scenes. They're not seeing all of the people coming and talking to the average person. They're not listening to the, uh, they're not talking to the people that are there just to see the speakers, but they're actually there to network with other people. And I had the opportunity to talk to a couple of people. Uh, one guy, says he's Jewish and he had a very good conversation with him and he was talking about how he supported President Trump and how he loves America. What's your name? Uh, my name is Joe Basrawi. You're Jewish? I'm Jewish. Oh. I'm Latino. I'm Arab. I'm a lot of things. Wow. Yeah. So what brings you to CPAC? Well, this is my fourth CPAC. Uh, I, I, it's becoming a tradition for me to come here every year and uh, I come here to learn from other people, to uh, further educate myself about conservatism, get a feel about what the conservative movement is going to do this year, um, and network and make friends and have fun. I talked to a police officer uh, that was that was not, he's, he's actually a retired police officer. He was a former Capitol police officer. And I actually have a video clip of that as well. So tell me, what did the, what did the former cop say about what happened on January 6th? What's his take? Well, it was very interesting because I had to ask him, I said, so what do you think about what happened on January 6th? And he told me, because he still has connections with people that are still on the police force in the Capitol, that they actually were offered more assistance January the 5th, and it was turned down. So it was almost like they were like, no, we want to set this up. It's like they almost had it planned. And he said at that point when they rejected more help, it was on them, not President Trump. You know, you're raising a really interesting point from your new friend, the ex-cop, because the FBI and others on the inside have now revealed that they had intelligence days before the January 6th speech by Trump. They yep. knew what was coming. And literally, the offers of more security were turned down, turned down as yep. if they wanted something bad to happen. Is that exactly what exactly? And then they went. So they went through this whole impeachment sham over the trying to say that President Trump incited the violence, the insurrection, and come to find out, they knew that something was going to happen. Personally, they knew it was going to happen because they were planning on it. They were planning on making it happen. It sure looks like it was a setup. Let's let's switch gears for a minute and talk about Trump. I, I was mentioning to you before that I had a really interesting conversation with a, um, a gentleman from Canada today 
that is very um, enamored with President Trump and the conservative viewpoint. He's um, distressed over the fact that Canada has gone way left and the conservative party, which is their equivalent of our Republican party in the United States is out of power and is on the outside yelling over the fence, but they really have no ability to influence policy. He suggested to me that it might be better if Trump does not run in 2024, but becomes the kingmaker and the policy leader of the Republican party. Now, I know you're a big Trump supporter. What's your reaction to my friend's uh, suggestion politically? Well, I would like to be honest with you. I would like to see President Trump run again in 2024. I mean, I really would. Uh, we need the country to get back on track for women were starting businesses, making more wages than ever before. Black people, Latinos were working jobs more than ever before. We need to get back to that. We need to get away from this whole, you know, pandemic or epidemic with the, the COVID. We need to get away from that. We need the country to come back. But for someone to say that they only want President Trump to just work with the Republican Party and just kind of like be in the background and doing it. The Republicans and the GOP, the establishment, they don't want anything to do with Trump. They want Trump out of the way. And personally, this is a personal note, I truly believe that the GOP did backdoor deals with the Democrats saying that, hey, you help us, we'll get your Republican Party back as long as you help us get rid of President Trump. It sure looks like it when you've got certain senators like, I'll be, be honest with you, you got McConnell, uh, you've got Romney, you've got Susan Collins, yep. um, you've got Murkowski. I mean, they act and vote like liberal Democrats, right? And when, and when they were asked to step up and support the policies of Trump, they went in the opposite direction on a freight train going 100 miles an hour. They couldn't get away fast enough and they couldn't go left fast enough. Yep. So speaking about differences in policy, the, the speech this morning from Governor DeSantis of Florida was very interesting. He talked about the fact that Florida, under his leadership, is wide open for business. You can go to a restaurant, the schools are open, the CPAC convention is there, and they allow people to congregate. The beaches are open, tourism is open, and their COVID infection and death rate is on the very low end, Will Johnson. But the science says millions should be dead in Florida <laughs> right now, right? And they ought to have a lockdown in New York where more people are dying. They ought to have a lockdown like California. There's no schools, there's no businesses, there's no gyms, there's no restaurants or bars and more people are dying there. What's it like in the convention center? Is everybody in masks and social distancing? Well, the, the, they have two rules and I found this out today. If you don't have the mask on, you have to be six feet apart from everyone that you're talking to. Other than that, you have to wear the mask. And they have a team of people walking around. And if they're behind you, they'll go like this and look to see if you have a mask on. And they'll go, you got to put the mask on. You got to put the mask on. I'm walking and I have a cup in my hand. I just got water because I'm walking. I'm talking to people and I'm a little thirsty. So I just recently got a cup in my hand. I come up the escalators with the cup in my hand. And I have my microphone and my camera in the other hand and I'm drinking. And while I'm drinking, the lady go, where's your mask? I said, I'm drinking. She go, but where's your mask? You need to have your mask on. I said, I can't drink with the mask on. And she said, well, I'm not going to argue with you. And I'm like, thank you. That's like the first sensible thing you said. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Well, I got news for you. DeSantis is on the right track, Will, because they don't have any more extra dead people and the whole state ought to be dead the way he's running it. Oh, yeah. The science was right. Am I yeah. correct? Oh, you're 100 percent correct. And just to be clear, I don't claim to be a doctor or physician or any of that. But, you know, I agree. If, if it was a science, 
then everybody should be dead in the state, but it's not. And that should tell everyone, it should tell the entire country and even the entire world that there's something else going on here. Oh yeah, big time brother, big time. So what's the, what's the big excitement for tomorrow on the Will Johnson agenda? Anything well, you should be looking for? Well, I plan, uh, hopefully, um, I'm going to talk to, his name is James, or yeah, is it James? Yeah, James from the Epic Times. I actually had a, a, talk, a brief uh, discussion with him today. I plan on talking to him. I plan on talking to some more uh, high priority people, because like I said, when you go in and you can see people on the stage, they're just doing their spiel. And you can't go in there and you can't talk to people. You can't talk to them while they're on the stage. And it's kind of like almost redundant recording them while everybody else is watching them. So then I come back and I'm gonna show everybody what they've already seen. I plan on talking to more people. And I think like today was like the first major day of it and people just kind of getting their foot holding and you know, trying to get their, what they're going to be doing. I think tomorrow's going to be a little bit more lax and be able to get more people to, to have a conversation. Well, we look forward to it, Will. Thank you very much for staying up with us tonight. I know it's early in the morning and you've been up all day. We really appreciate you at ATP and glad you're part of our family. Uh, we want to see you on again tomorrow night. I hope you can stay awake, grab some <laughs> coffee when it gets around midnight, and we'll be back with you again tomorrow. Sounds thank good. You, Appreciate you coming on. And thank you out there in ATP land. We're going to have some more insight from Will Johnson live from CPAC tomorrow. Tune in same time, same CPAC channel with us for ATP. I'm Barry Newsbaum.